Denver, Seattle, six and a half is the spread. Totals around 42 and a half, 43. Of course, we got the Russell Wilson revenge spot here. Uh, who do you like in a captain spot for this one? So I think uh, a lot of people gravitate towards Russell Wilson, Cortland Sutton, and the captain saw right, rightfully so. Like you said, this is a revenge game. I think Sutton will be his top target uh, this season. But I like DK Metcalf uh, in the captain slot. Uh, people are down on him this year with Geno Smith under center, uh, and rightfully so. Uh, but he was, you know, the wide receiver eight, week six through eight, when Geno Smith filled in for Russell Wilson last year. Um, it, you know, Metcalf, he obviously has the talent to break the slate. Um, plus, you know, this matchup uh, could be good for him. Um, Broncos played man coverage at the highest rate last year. DK, um, you know, averaged 3.3 yards per route run against man last year, which ranked eighth out of 105. Um, now, new defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. uh, Ajero Averro, might not, you know, use man coverage as much. He's coming from the Rams, might use a bit more zone. But either way, uh, this could be a sneaky spot for Metcalf, who, again, you know, he has downfield uh, ability and, you know, in, you know, he's an end zone target. So um, it'll only take a few big catches for him to really break the slate. So I just like using him at the captain slate. I think he's his uh, roster ship is going to be a bit too low here. Yeah, it's, I, it's going to be really interesting. I can't call it like how the uh, it's going to shake out in terms of the percentages. Yeah, but I still do like Sutton. I just think, uh, you know, Russell Wilson, you know, I, I read this story on ESPN where they kind of went into, you know, how Pete Carroll essentially took the ball out of his hands and said, you know, we, we got to run it more. And that's obviously been happening his whole career. So going to Seattle in week one, I just think he's going to throw the football around. So give me some Sutton, give me some Jer- Jerry Judy as well. Because yeah. when you look at this Seattle defense and you say, okay, like where are the weaknesses? I I, I think it's up the middle. You know, they, they have linebackers that can't really cover uh, well. And then Adams, you know, he's going to be do more like close to the line of scrimmage. But if you have to put him in coverage, he's going to struggle as well. So I, I think that, you know, Jerry Judy is a guy who could kind of run routes from the inside, still get to the intermediate area of the field. So I think he'll, I think both of the, both of the Bronco receivers uh, will have yeah. a good game. So like them. And one other guy option is Tyler Lockett, because I feel like he's going to be the forgotten guy, actually. Like, I think people are <laughs> yeah. going to go Metcalf. I think people are going to want to stack both Bronco receivers as I do as well. But Tyler Lockett, still a very talented guy. And you know, just because he hasn't had like that splash game uh, with Gino necessarily, uh, I still think he's he's right there and he's going to run routes pretty much at the same rate as Metcalf. So I think he'll be the lowest rostered of all four of those top receivers. So uh, he's probably actually the best bet just uh, for from a game theory perspective. Yeah, love the locket call. Just to be clear, I, I love Sutton. He's my wide receiver 15 right now. Um, and Metcalf is only wide receiver 28. But I think their ceilings are similar. So, yeah, when it just comes to the captain slot, trying to get a little bit contrarian to to have some, you know, leverage over the field. But um, I, I do like the Lockett call. Again, you know, Metcalf and Lockie both have sneaky ceilings. Yeah, I mean, if Metcalf and Lockett both go off, then you're just going to need Geno Smith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but probably, probably won't happen. You know, you know what was interesting, too, though? I feel like this is – this could be another – like, what if Rashad Penny just picks up where he left off? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't think that's yeah, course. No. I, he's not getting as much hype as he was. You know, now it's like, oh, what's going on with Walker? Like, I feel like it's kind of quiet for, for Penny compared to where it was at the end of last season. Well, yeah, I mean, Walker's expected to miss now. So um, Penny should dominate the early down work. Um, he's not used as much in the passing game. Um, that's a yeah. you know, sneak peek to my cheat code here. Um, but yeah, no, Penny is definitely a viable option. I don't know about the captain slot, but you know, certainly he has the upside. All it takes is one long run for him and he's the home run hitter kind of guy. So yeah, I, I could certainly get behind Penny there. Uh, who do you like for your dart throw? Your so, yeah. So my dart throw for the Seahawks is Travis Homer, baby. I mean, like I said, it sounds like, uh, Kenneth Walker is going to be inactive. He's still coming back from his hernia injury. Um, and Penny's going to dominate the early down work. But it'll probably be Travis Homer um, handling, you know, third down duties, even the two minute offense. Um, So I think he has a ton of upside in the spot where the Seahawks should be in a trailing game script. Um, So I would not be shocked if Homer ends up with, you know, four plus receptions and a slate like this, like that's, that's 
enough um, in the flex slot. So love Homer. And then on the, the Broncos side, it's got to be uh, Montreal Washington. Um, you know, he's competing with KJ Hamler for the number three role, uh, wide receiver role after Tim Patrick's season ending injury. Um, and Hamler himself, he's dealing with a knee injury right now. He might be at less than 100%. Um, even if he does suit up. So I could see Washington getting a decent amount of work here, like, I don't know, 40% routes run. Plus, he's also the team's main kick and punt returner. So nice, like some Washington uh, Broncos defense, you know, stacks there for the the double dip on a potential uh, touchdown. Yeah, I love me some Montreal Washington. I am apparently 68 spots higher than consensus on him in the in our season Good long range. Oh, season long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So season long. Like I have him like 99. <laughs> Uh, and he's consensus 160 wide well, receiver 166. Oh, so, oh, wow. I'm definitely closer to you, right? Uh, he's got to be like, uh, if I had to guess, like 120 or something. Yeah, I mean, it, dep- it just depends. Yeah. I got him, I think I got him for like maybe 40% of the season long, you know, routes. Yeah. Or something like that. Either way, he's uh, not a main slate kind of guy. He's no. kind of perfect for a showdown, he, though, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I love, <laughs> I love me some mantra. I think that's a great call. Um, you know, guy who has some speed like you said kick punt returner so you can stack him with the defense if you want to go that way you know this is a bad it could be a bad seattle offense uh we get quarterbacked by geno smith so <laughs> i think there's a lot of uh options when with montrell so yeah he's one of my favorite players i think that's a, a great nice. call i can't believe you didn't go with dj dallas for for seattle well, i mean tra- i can't take travis homer and dj dallas right yeah, but I mean that that was our boy. You set the prop for him in our action network. Uh Travis Homer is is more my boy. When um I, I just consider DJ more of Penny's backup, no? I mean he is, but he can also catch the ball. So yeah. Like he's a I actually I would take like if if you wanted to bet uh, of course you know, I who do. has more what do you want to do? Total yards, touches? I don't know how you want to do this. Um, but... Receiving yards. It sounds like we're talking about receiving yards. Let's just well, go. No, with... but I can't. I, I want like all, I want total usage though. I, I feel like we need rush plus receiving because I'm just saying. I think he gets more total usage in this game. Yeah, I, I think DJ would out rush Homer. Yeah, I'll give you that. But yeah, but it could. You're saying it could be even like Homer could out catch him. So I'm, I feel like total yards is a decent. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Screw it. Screw it. I'll, I'll take you up. Um, I The reason I like Homer is because of his receiving upside. Yeah. But sure, I'll, I'll take you head to head on total yards if, if you want to do that. Yeah, I, mean, I, I I like Dallas in this game. I just think he's had a, a good preseason. And, you know, Pete Carroll loves these running backs. You know, Dallas was mm-hmm. looking good. Uh, so I think if if they feel like, OK, maybe we don't want to run Penny into the ground, that Walker role. Mm-hmm. Maybe DJ Dallas gets you know eight to ten carries in this game. Yeah, Long no, shot, I, but... yeah, I could I could totally see that um, because yeah, they they can't give Penny more than what fifteen uh, carries on opening day to to just try to keep him fresh all season, right? Like, well, I mean, mean they got um, Walker in the waiting in the wings, so maybe they just run him uh, into the ground. True. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, how many uh, projected touches do you have for Penny? Yeah, I'm at Walker. 14. I actually, I'm going to bump him up a little though. Um, yeah, I think I need, I, I think I want to get him to like 15.5 in this game. Like, I think he's, I think, you know, looking at what Pete Carroll did with him and that coaching staff, you know, 20 plus carries the last two games of the season after he was in the teens uh, in the three before that. So when he started his little streak, he went 16 for 137, then he went 11 for 39, 17 for 135, and then the last two games of the year, 25 and 23. So yep. I think they might just pick up where they left off. So, yeah, he, he's, he he's kind of sneaky, man. Kind of yeah, kind of sneaky. He, he was the number one back at the end of last season. Number one. Uh, Yeah. It's, oh, and one more guy, Alberto. If he's oh, happy yeah. to, got to got to mention Albert. Oh, uh, good. I thought you were gonna say Nick Bellore or something. But yeah, Albert. Oh, <laughs> he's Albert, a linebacker oh. now. I don't even think he's still the fullback anymore. <laughs> maybe maybe they. <laughs> like... Yeah, but you know I love me some Albert. Oh. Uh, what do you mean can... if he suits up? Is he not? Uh, I, I don't he... know. He's like banged up. Like I don't, I just never. I don't trust anybody on this Broncos <laughs> team because I feel like they all get hurt. And we're recording this on yeah. Thursday, you know. So there's like another whole day of practice where. 
you know, things could happen or guys could get rebanged up. So, so I always feel like they drop bomb on us. Like, oh, <laughs> like KJ Hamler, he's, he's not good anymore yeah. or something. Like yeah. so. But uh, yeah, it, he should be playing and he should be playing a lot. So uh, his, his target per route run rate uh, is up in the mid twenties for his career. And that is exceptional for a tight end. So uh, if he's on the field, you know, I know it's a new quarterback, so you never know, but there's a good, very good chance that uh, he sees some action. So uh, love me some Albert Okuwebunam. Yeah, and with Greg Dulcich on the IR, I mean, Albert O could top 80% routes run rate easily with Eric Tomlinson and Eric Saubert backing him up. Yeah. So, oh, we uh, do got a fullback in this game, Andrew Beck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I almost We're forgot about good old though. Andrew Beck. <laughs> we are not touching him. <laughs> hey, he could get that little play action. <laughs> I always, that's what I'm always if, waiting if any, for. That little play anything, action the, one yard touchdown. But I think the troll in this game will be Mike Boone. Apparently, <laughs> he's uh, carving out an early season role. Um, so, what, I know, my like an active list? what is this? No, 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 you didn't no, see that report. You team. didn't see that report. Yeah, that no, I did. I Melvin did. Gordon's going to be eating into Javante's role more than we thought. And now Mike Boone might get, you know, a handful of carries. Uh, it's just unleash Javante, please. I feel like they're gonna. It didn't even Melvin Gordon say they were like they were yeah. gonna unleash Devante. I feel yeah. like we always get one of these reports just because like it's like quickbait at this point. It's exactly. like oh. and and who it, there's no way that you could take these like reports seriously when it's just like oh any type of coach project any type of touches like the only thing is like when a guy when like they're actually splitting reps. But so right. coaches will be like oh yeah I want to get both of these guys twenty touches. It's like. Do you even know how many touches are in a game, bro? Like, so <laughs> exactly. yeah, I, I think we see, I think we see Javante. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah.